Welcome to Kids Church with your hosts, Miss Catherine, Father Jay, and Sally Lolly, and our friends from Church of the Ascension. We are so glad you've decided to join us today. Church, it's so good to be with you this morning. So this week, Bryn and Allie and Josephine learned the Bible memory verse, which is Psalm 90, verse 12. So we're going to listen to Bryn and Allie and Josephine. So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Psalm 90. I can't see. Psalm 90. Psalm 90, 12. So teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. 90, 12. Psalm 90, 12. Thank you, girls. You did a wonderful job with that verse. So this Sunday is called Christ the King Sunday, and it's a wonderful Sunday that we celebrate Jesus being the King. And it's, um, we're going to move our godly play clock to that Sunday. So let's move it. And look what comes right after Christ the King. We change colors and we enter into the season of Advent. So today we are going to be thinking about Christ the King and how Jesus is a fair ruler. And we're going to be thinking about that while we learn our Bible memory verse from Miss Stacy. Learn more about Christ the King Sunday and making crowns from Miss Kelsey and um, sing a song with Jane and her team. But before we do any of that, let's go visit with Father Jay and Sally Lolly. Well, hello, Father Jay. Good morning, Miss Catherine. And hello, Sally Lolly. Hello, Miss Catherine. Hello, my friends at Kids Church. Hello, Father Jay. Hello, Sally. It's so nice to be back together again. And on this Christ the King Sunday, we're going to be thinking about how Jesus is a fair ruler. Jesus is a fair ruler? That's right. Do you know what that means? No. Well, Father Jay, would you like to help us understand? Yes. Well, do you know what a ruler is, Sally? Yes. A ruler is a stick that you use to tell numbers. That's true, a ruler is, but Jesus is a fair ruler. It means something different. Oh, what does it mean? It means that Jesus is fair, um, and so you know when we follow the rules and someone breaks the rules, it's what? Unfair! Yes, and Jesus is a fair ruler. It means that when things are good and bad, Jesus is the best at deciding um, which is which. He knows what is good and what is bad. He knows what is fair and what is unfair. He knows what is true and what is untrue. Oh, Jesus is a fair ruler. He's king. That's right. He is king. Yes, Christ the King Sunday is Jesus is fair ruler. Yes. I think I understand. Okay, well, let's do our liturgy where we say our prayer, our collect for Christ the King Sunday. So let's fold our hands, bow our heads, and pray to our God. Almighty and everlasting God, whose will it is to restore all things in your well-beloved Son, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, mercifully grant that the peoples of the earth, divided and enslaved by sin, may be freed and brought together under his most gracious rule, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. 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 Miss Catherine. Yes, Sally Lally. The liturgy talked about Jesus as king and ruler right. and fail. That's right. Yes. It did. It was our prayer for Christ the King, and it did say all those things. So today we're going to learn our Bible memory verse from Miss Stacy. So let's listen to Miss Stacy. Hi kids, I'm Miss Stacy, and I get to help you with your Christ the King Bible memory verses. Today we're going to look at Matthew 25, 
verses 31 and 32. It's a long one. Those of you who can read, why don't you read this with me? When the Son of Man comes in His glory and all the angels with Him, then He will sit on His glorious throne. Before Him will be gathered all the nations, and He will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. Matthew 25, 31 and 32. This is a long verse, but it's really important because it teaches us and reminds us that Jesus is King. He is the Son of Man and He is coming back. He's going to come in glory. He's going to come with His angels. He's going to sit on His glorious throne and He's going to do all the things that the King of the universe should do with the world that He created. This is long and so I wrote it out in different colors so different words would stand out to me and when I would picture it in my imagination that would help me remember the different lines. There are six long lines on here and I actually didn't just write them out in different colors on this piece of paper but I wrote them out on six separate pieces of paper and made some art to go with the line that might help me remember what the line was about and then I posted them on my stairs. I go up and down my stairs a lot. And so I figured that was a place that I would pass often and um, it would help me remember the Bible verse. Let's have a look at what that looks like. So when I come out of my bedroom to head downstairs, this is what I see. When the Son of Man comes in His glory, and I made it look like it was kind of glorious. That would help me remember it. And all the angels with him. Put some wings on the word angels. Then he will sit on his glorious throne. And there's a bit of a throne in the background there. When I come around, here's the rest of the verse. Before him will be gathered all the nations. I even put a little globe on there to remind me it's all the nations and he will separate people one from another. And I drew some little people and put some arrows down there. As a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. When you write out your Bible memory verse line by line, you don't have to put it on big pages like I did. You could put it on little pieces of paper and stick it around your desk where you do schoolwork, or you could put it in the bathroom so when you're brushing your teeth or washing your hands, you can practice it or you can talk to your parents and find other places that you might hang it around your house so that you have lots of opportunity to practice and remind yourself about Christ the King. Thanks for letting me share. Have a great day. Thank you so much, Miss Stacy, for teaching us the Bible memory verse. And I love the idea of putting the words down your stairs so that you can see them each and every time you go up and down the stairs. Well, Sally Lolly, look what you're wearing. Miss Catherine. Yes. I have a crown like a princess. Yes, you do. Guess what? What? Miss Kelsey made it for me as a gift. Yes. And she's going to teach us about crowns and king and Jesus. That's right. Miss Kelsey made a crown for Sally Lolly. That was so kind of her. Miss Catherine. Yes, Sally Lolly. Scary face. Oh my. So that's what we're going to do next is we're going to hear from Miss Kelsey, um, who is going to talk to us a bit more about Christ the King Sunday and teach us how to make our own crowns. So let's listen to Miss Kelsey. Are you ready to do the video, Rosie? Yeah, I'll bet they'll be really happy to see you. They said they liked seeing you last time. Okay, good baby girl. Hi guys, I'm Miss Kelsey. A few months ago or so, I did a video for Kids Church where I taught us how to talk to God by drawing. And this is the picture we did last time. And today, Rosie and I are gonna be talking to you about Christ the King Sunday. It's the week before Advent starts, and it is a very special day where we celebrate Jesus, not only being the Son of God, but also the King. Now, I bet a bunch of you have seen books or movies with kings and queens, princes and princesses. When I was growing up, I was determined to be a princess when I grew up. And I bet a bunch of you feel the same way about being princes, princesses, kings or queens. And Rosie, of course, is a princess. 
So a crown is a very special sort of hat that lets other people know that you're really, really important. Some crowns, let's take a look at the crowns Miss Catherine let me borrow. Ooh, so some of them are made out of really, really expensive metals like gold and they look very magnificent. If you saw me from very far away, you would see that I had a crown. This is a very cool one, put it right there. We also have some smaller crowns. These are more tiaras like a princess might wear um, before she grows up to be a queen. Uh, it has jewels and sparklies. This one's made of gold and very, very beautiful. Um, oh, we've got some very, very fancy crowns that are made of gold and cloth and they've got big jewels, sapphires and emeralds and rubies. Now, I mean, I would love to be able to wear any of these crowns all the time so people know I'm important. Let's see, and what's the last crown we have here? Hmm. Now, I hope I never have to wear a crown like this. The thorns are very large and sharp. And if I put it on my head, I would start to bleed. It would hurt me really, really badly. If I had the choice, I would much rather wear one of these crowns. They look good, they're comfortable, and if I wore them, people would see and think that I was really special. If I wore something like this, not only would it hurt, but people would think that I'm not special at all. But the amazing thing is, the person who wore a crown just like this was the most important king in the world, which made a crown just like this, the most important crown. Next week, we're gonna be celebrating Advent. Those are the four weeks before Christmas. But what are we getting ready for? It's not just presents, it's not just about Christmas trees, we're getting ready for Jesus. Because on Christmas, we celebrate when God's son Jesus was born as a baby. But he didn't come to be a baby. He came to grow up into a man who would one day wear a crown of thorns just like this and be nailed to a cross. And people would bow to him and say that he was a king, but they wouldn't mean it. They would say it to be mean and they would make him wear a crown like this because it would hurt. All the time not knowing that they were actually right. He was the king. He did deserve to be bowed to. But instead of a crown like this, he deserved to wear the most amazing crowns in the world. So now I'm going to show you how to make your own crowns. First, you'll want to take paper, draw a crown, and cut it in the shape you want. If your parents aren't very good at this, they can get a bunch of crowns at Burger King and decorate those instead. You can decorate it however you want, and I'll show a couple different ways to give you some ideas. When we're done decorating, we'll tape or staple the two pieces together. You might need to wait a little while for the crowns to dry, depending on what you use. So we've been talking about how important kings and queens are, but what does a good ruler do? Well. A good king, queen, prince, and princess wants what's best for their people and cares for them. They pass fair laws so no one gets taken advantage of. If there's a battle, they are the first one into the fight and they don't leave until everyone else has gotten out safely. A good ruler makes sure their people have what they need. And if the smaller or weaker are being hurt, a good ruler steps in and protects them, a lot like a big brother or sister because they care about justice. And in the Bible, a good ruler would love and worship God and teach their people to do the same. It's a very important job and not at all easy to do. The Bible says that someday King Jesus is coming back and everyone will take off their crowns and give them to him. But most of us don't wear crowns every day. So what does that mean for us? Well, a crown is something that says we're important and we all have things we're really proud of things that we do or have or are that make us feel special, like being smart, pretty, or handsome, being really good at something, or even the toys we have can all make us feel special or important. Even grown-ups feel this way. They're like jewels on the crowns of our hearts. But who gets to wear it?
who should be king or queen of our hearts. I know I like to be in charge, but I also know that God is better at it and he loves me more than I do. It isn't easy to do, but part of being a Christian means I take my crown, everything I love or I'm proud of, and I give it to King Jesus, asking him to be in charge. It takes a lot of practice, but Jesus is the best king and he's the only one who deserves to be my king. I wonder, if you were to make a crown and write or draw everything that makes you special or important, what would be on it? In just a minute, Miss Catherine, Father Jay, and Sally Lally are going to explain what we'll do with these crowns, and I'm so, so excited to see the crowns that you'll make. Now, uh, until then, remember, my dears, you are beautiful, you are loved, you are cherished, you are His. You are made in the image of God, and that's always a special thing. You are made by the King, the King of this earth, which means that you always have worth. I love you. Well, hello! Welcome back, Rosie. Do you like the crowns we made? Goodbye, Rosie. Thank you so much, Miss Kelsey, and it was fun to see Rosie again. And wow, she gave us some great ideas about how to make our crowns and write the things that make us feel important on them. Yes, Miss Kelsey has a kitty cat, and she's very talented to make crowns. She made me a crown, and guess what? What is it, Sally Lolly? I put coloring on my crown for things that are favorite. Yes. Yes. Let, let's look at what Sally Lolly wrote on her crown. Three things. One, Sally Lolly. <laughs> Two, friend, because I like being a friend. Mm -hmm. And three, my favorite, Meep Meep. That's right. We met Meep Meep last week. Yes. And that's her new, very favorite friend. Yes, my forever friend. Yeah. Well, those are great things to write on your crown, Sally Lolly. Yes. Miss Catherine? Yes, Sally Long. I love you. Oh, I love you too. So we're thinking today about how Jesus is a fair ruler and celebrating Christ the King Sunday. And we get to hear a really wonderful song from Jane and her team um, about Jesus coming back again. And some of the kids at Church of the Ascension drew some pictures of their better day or their best day, things that make up, that would be on their better day. And we're going to see those pictures at the end of the song. So let's listen. Miss Catherine? Yes, Sally Lolly. Guess what the better day is for me? What is that? Having a crown. Yes, it's a better day when you wear a crown. Yes, I made wear it every day for the, all the days. That's right. Because I like it. And that makes me think of, kids, If you, when you make your crowns, have your, kid, your parents take a picture and send it to me, and we'll put it in a kids' church video. Yes. So, yeah. so but let's sing now with Jane and her team.
Thank you so much, Jane and Lydia, John Victor and Beatrix, for leading the song and for all the musicians. Uh, we really, oh, what a great song. It's so upbeat. I love singing it. What did you think, Sally Lolly? Yes, I like the instruments, the men, toot toot sounds. Yeah. They were fancy. They were fancy. It's Catherine. Yes, Sally Lolly. <gasps> meep Meep is back. Well, meep, welcome, meep. Meep, meep. Meep, 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 Wow, Meep Meep's joining us for Christ the King Sunday. Me. Yeah. Miss Catherine. Yes, Sally Lally. Father Jay brought a show and tell. Meep Meep. Oh, yes, he brought a ruler. Yes, he brought the ruler because he wants to teach us about Christ the King. Okay, yes, we're thinking about Jesus being a fair ruler. Yes, well, I was thinking that a ruler really is uh, something that can help us to understand Jesus as a ruler, because what does a ruler do, Sally? A ruler tells numbers to show how much something is. Mm -hmm. That's right. So what, what if we said this? Um, let's guess how many inches tall is Meet Me. Oh, I guess two inches. Okay. You guess two inches. And I, I guess 12 inches. How many inches do you guess? Mm. I'd guess maybe 10 inches. 10 inches. Okay, well, whatever the ruler says, then we know what it really is because numbers don't lie. Oh, he's bigger than what any of us thought. 14. Meep, meep. Little beetle, beetle, in the mouth of only tiptoe. Yes, the meep is very tall. Yeah. The meep, meep is 14 inches. Yeah. That's right, yeah. and you know, Jesus is like a ruler because when Jesus decides something, he always decides the right way. Mm -hmm. Just like a number doesn't lie, Jesus doesn't lie. And when we have someone who's our king, we really want a king who's fair, a king who tells the truth, a king who knows between good and bad, and good and evil, and wise and foolish. Yes, Father Jay brought the ruler to teach about the ruler. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> that is funny, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Wow, we've been really having a, such a good time thinking about Christ the King and so glad we could see Meep Meep again. Bye-bye. Yeah, so Father Jay, would you like to close us in prayer? Yes, I would. Let's do this. Let's fold our hands and let's bow our heads and let's pray to our God. Uh, Jesus, thank you that you are the ruler of all things, that all things are under your feet. And uh, when we come to you, Lord Jesus, we know that you are a great and fair king. Uh, you rule with wisdom and justice and fairness and goodness and truth. And we honor you and praise you and worship you on this day. Uh, Lord Jesus, may our children grow to be men and women who uh, bow to King Jesus that come to your throne seeking your grace and mercy and goodness and kindness. Thank you for ruling over us so well. We bless you and we praise you. And we ask this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. 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 We will see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Meep, meep, meep. Meep, meep. Bye-bye.